Now, Ohio State had a really close call against Nebraska that I don't think any of us saw coming. Nebraska, they just got crashed a week ago by Indiana. So you would think that Ohio State will come in and they will roll these boys. They will cover that 25 and a half point spread. But instead, they end up sneaking out a 21 to 17 win, which Nebraska, if it wasn't for a couple of things that didn't go their way in the end zone, they got stopped a couple of times. They probably would have won that game. Okay, it definitely wasn't the best game that we've seen out of Ohio State this year, but I'm not about to define Ohio State based off one close call because if this year's college football season has showed us anything, it's that we don't really have an elite team outside of Oregon. So therefore, you're going to see a lot of inconsistent play out of a lot of these teams that most of us will perceive to be good enough to win a national championship. And the reason why you can't judge Ohio State off this win and say that, oh, they're a fraud, they aren't going to beat Penn State, they may not even be better than Indiana, is because, remember, Georgia, when they lost Alabama on the road, they had that close call against the University of Kentucky, A lot of folks going into that game against Texas thought that Texas was bound to win that game and that it was their game to lose. And we saw Georgia really early in that game show us that they still are the team that most of us expected them to be coming into this year. You can still be a dominant team and have a couple of off games. We've seen Alabama have a couple of losses this year. They lose to Tennessee, they lose to Vandy, but they just destroyed Missouri and ended their playoff hopes. You can't judge any team based off a one-week sample size, based off how chaotic this season has been. You have to judge a team based off the overall body of work. And we've seen Georgia in the past under Kirby Smart show that they're able to play their best football in the biggest games when their back seems to be up against the wall. And that's the same way that I feel about Ohio State. The same way people were talking about Georgia going into that Texas game. It's the same way people are talking about Ohio State under Ryan Day going into this big matchup against Penn State. But no matter how sloppy Ohio State may play, I'm not trusting little game James Franklin to beat this team. Ohio State, they own James Franklin, they own Penn State football. When you talk about Penn State football, you talk about how Ohio State is their daddy, and they own them. And we've seen a lot of times throughout James Franklin's career, he struggles to win these big-time games. And I don't see anything being differently this year. Penn State, they got a good team, but they're not as talented as what Ohio State is. It's a pretty obvious gap between Oregon, Ohio State, and the rest of the Big Ten. From a talent standpoint, you can tell that both those two programs were just miles ahead of everybody else in the Big Ten this year. And Penn State, they're a Tier 2 team in the Big Ten. They're not on the first tier like Oregon and Ohio State are because I still don't believe that Penn State is a dominant team. And we've seen them be down 20 to 3 at halftime against USC and they were able to dig themselves from up out of that hole but I don't see them being able to beat Ohio State with the fact that their offense still isn't that dynamic to me. I don't believe that Drew Aller is going to have a great day against Ohio State's defense which has been a lot of talk about how that defense has kind of somewhat underperformed this year under Jim Knowles, some of the guys that they brought back, like JTT, Jack Sawyer, they haven't had as good as a year as what you expected them. But with so much being on the line for Ohio State in this game, I expect them to play their best football. Ryan Day is not a bad coach. A lot of Ohio State fans want this dude fired damn near every week, but you got guys like Brian Kelly who have everything in the world that they need to win big-time games, and they've been unable to get it done. I like James Franklin. 
I see Penn State being a playoff team, but I don't see them being able to pull off the win this year against the Buckeyes, man. The Buckeyes still have more firepower on offense. You got this true freshman phenom in Jeremiah Smith who seems to make big plays every single week. You still got a really good running back room, although the two-headed monster of Henderson and Juckins hasn't been what I thought it would be. And they do have some offensive line issues, which kind of makes it a little bit favorable for Penn State with how good their defensive line is. But you can't judge Ohio State based off how they've looked against Nebraska. You got to judge Ohio State based off the team that they are overall same thing with Georgia we know that Georgia they're capable of playing their best football any day of the week same thing with Ohio State Ohio State is a well-coached football team I don't think that Ryan Day is in that Brian Kelly or Lincoln Riley territory and if Ohio State can win this game I believe that it's going to end all the doubts about this team being able to win the Big Ten because they do have to play Indiana. Indiana, I believe, has a better chance at beating Ohio State than what Penn State does, as crazy as that may be to believe. But Kurt Signetti, this dude just knows how to win. James Franklin, yeah, he knows how to win, but not against Ohio State. Penn State hasn't been convincing enough to me, and I haven't seen out of them this year to warrant giving them the benefit of a doubt over Ohio State. A lot of people are going to pick Penn State because they've looked like the better of the two teams over the last couple of weeks, but like Texas versus Georgia showed us, you can't judge a team based off a few off games because a lot of these teams have the ability to play their best football, and Ohio State is one of those teams.